Hello, this is a continuation video for topic 1.4 for Math 21. In the previous discussion video, we answered items on the formal definition of a limit. And in this video, we will be answering exercises on continuity. We will be answering the following exercises. For the first set of items, we identify the possible points of continuity of the given function f and determine if f is continuous there. We also classify each discontinuity as removable, jump essential, or infinite essential. And if the discontinuity is removable, we redefine f so that it will be continuous at the point of discontinuity. For letter b of the exercises, we need to find the values of a and b such that this given piecewise defined function is continuous everywhere. Again, you're advised to answer these items first on your own before continuing with the video so you can verify your answers later. Let's start. For number 1, we are given the function f of x is equal to 1 over x if x is less than 3 and 2 over 9 minus x if x is greater than or equal to 3. We begin by identifying first the possible points of discontinuity. Recall that for a given piecewise defined function, possible discontinuities can occur at the endpoints of intervals. So x equals 3. We also add the x values for which the function is undefined. So 1 over x is undefined at x equals 0. And 2 over 9 minus x is undefined at x equals 9. So for the solution, we check for continuity at each x value we have identified. That is, we check the function value, the limit of the function, and if the function value and the limit of the function at the x value are equal. For x equals 3, the function value of 3 is equal to Take note that 3 is in this interval, so we use 2 over 9 minus x. So f at 3 is equal to 2 over 9 minus 3, or that is 1 third. Now for the limit of f as x goes to 3, we check both left and right hand limits. For the limit of f as x goes to 3 from the left, Take note that the values to the left of 3 are in this interval, so we use 1 over x. So this is equal to the limit of 1 over x as x goes to 3 from the left. And this is just equal to 1 third. On the other hand, the limit of f as x goes to 3 from the right Uh, the values to the right of 3 are in the second interval, so we use 2 over 9 minus x. So this is equal to the limit of 2 over 9 minus x as x goes to 3 from the right, which is just equal to 2 over 6 or 1 third. So the left and right hand limits are equal and therefore the limit exists. Lastly, we can see that the function value at 3 is 1 third, which is equal to the limit of the function as x goes to 3. Therefore, we can conclude that f is continuous at x equals 3. Now, let's check for continuity at x equals 0. x equals 0 is in the first interval, but 1 over x is undefined at 0, so f of 0 is undefined.
for the limit. Again, we evaluate the left and right hand limits. Take note that the values close to the left and right of 0 are both in the first interval. So we use 1 over x in evaluating both. So the limit of f as x goes to 0 from the left is equal to the limit of 1 over x as x goes to 0 from the left, which is just negative infinity. And the limit of f as x goes to 0 from the right is equal to the limit of 1 over x as x goes to 0 from the right, which is positive infinity. Now recall that if the left and right hand limits are positive or negative infinity, we have an infinite essential discontinuity. So thus, f has an infinite essential discontinuity at x equals 0. Lastly, for x equals 9, For the function value at 9, uh, 9 is in the second interval, and clearly 2 over 9 minus x is undefined at 9. So f of 9 is undefined. For the left and right hand limits, x values close to 9 are in the second interval. So we use 2 over 9 minus x in evaluating both. So the limit of f as x goes to 9 from the left is equal to the limit of 2 over 9 minus x as x goes to 9 from the left. We have 2 here over a denominator approaching 0 through positive values. So the limit is equal to positive infinity. On the other hand, the limit of f as x goes to 9 from the right is equal to the limit of 2 over 9 minus x as x goes to 9 from the right. We have 2 over a denominator approaching 0 through negative values. So the limit is negative infinity. So just like for x equals 0, since we have infinite limits, we can conclude. Thus, f has an infinite essential discontinuity at x equals 9. Let's proceed to number 2. For this piecewise defined function, we have an absolute value function, a greatest integer function, and a rational function. Let's examine each of them so we can identify where possible points of discontinuity can occur. For the first interval, we know that x plus 3 is continuous everywhere. Also, the absolute value function is continuous everywhere. So by the theorem on the continuity for composite functions, the absolute value of x plus 3 is continuous everywhere. For the second interval, we have a greatest integer function. So we recall the definition of a greatest integer function. The greatest integer function of x is equal to n if x is greater than or equal to n, but less than n plus 1, where n is an integer. But in this example, we are given the greatest integer function of 2x. So let's replace all x's here by 2x. We have the greatest integer function of 2x equal to n, if 2x is greater than or equal to n, but less than n plus 1, where n is an integer or equivalently the greatest integer function of 2x is equal to n 
if x is greater than or equal to n over 2 but less than n plus 1 over 2. So in the given function, this is just for the interval 0 to 1. Since n is supposed to be an integer in the definition, we check what happens at the integers 0 and 1. So when n is equal to 0, the greatest integer function of 2x is equal to 0 if x is greater than or equal to 0 but less than 1 half. And when n is equal to 1, the greatest integer function of 2x is equal to 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1 half but less than 1. So we can actually write this as another piecewise defined function. The greatest integer function of 2x will be equal to 0 if x is greater than 0 but less than 1 half. We excluded 0 here because 0 is already in the first interval here. And uh, the greatest integer function of 2x is 1 if x is greater than or equal to 1 half but less than 1. Now for x squared minus 5x over x minus 5, this is undefined at x equals 5. So let's summarize. Possible points of discontinuity are at the endpoints. x equals 0 x equals 1 half, x equals 1, and additionally, x equals 5. We can now begin checking for continuity. So let's copy the problem on this page, and let's start with x equals 0. The function value at 0 is equal to, take note that 0 is in this interval. So f at 0 is the absolute value of 0 plus 3, or this is equal to 3. Now we check the left and right hand limits of f. The limit of f as x goes to 0 from the left is equal to, values close to the left of 0 are in this interval. So this is equal to the limit of the absolute value of x plus 3. And this is just equal to 3. For the right hand limit, this is equal to the limit of values close to the right of 0 are in the second interval. So we refer to this definition of the greatest integer function of 2x. And it gives us the value 0. So this limit is just equal to 0. So the left and right hand limits are not equal and therefore the limit does not exist. In particular, recall that if this happens, f has a jump discontinuity. So we conclude that f has a jump discontinuity at x equals 0. Now let's check for continuity at x equals 1 half. For the function value at 1 half, take note that 1 half is in the second interval so that f at 1 half is equal to 1. We can verify this from this definition of the greatest integer function of 2x. For the limit of the function, we know that 1 half is in the second interval, 
So we use the greatest integer function of 2x for both left and right hand limits. So for the limit of f as x goes to 1 half from the left, take note that the values close to the left of 1 half are in the first interval here. So this limit is equal to 0. For the right hand limit, okay, just to make the solution complete, let's write the limit of the greatest integer function of 2x as x goes to 1 half from the left here. Uh, this is equal to 0. Now for the right hand limit, this is equal to the limit of the greatest integer function of 2x as x goes to 1 half from the right. Values to the right of 1 half are in the second interval here. So this limit is 1. So again, the left and right hand limits are not equal. The limit does not exist. And in particular, f has a jump discontinuity at x equals 1 half. Now let's check for continuity at x equals 1. For the function value at 1, take note that x equals 1 is in this interval. So we use x squared minus 5x all over x minus 5. And the function value at 1 is equal to 1 minus 5 over 1 minus 5. And this is just equal to 1. For the left hand limit, values close to the left of 1 are in the second interval. So we use the greatest integer function of 2x. This will be equal to the limit of the greatest integer function of 2x as x goes to 1 from the left. And this is just equal to 1 if we base it from here. For the right hand limit, values close to the right of 1 are in the last interval. So this is equal to the limit of x squared minus 5x all over x minus 5. And this is just equal to 1 minus 5 over 1 minus 5. Or this is just equal to 1. So the limit exists because the left and right hand limits are equal. Finally, we can see that the function value at 1 is equal to 1, which is also equal to the limit of f as x goes to 1. Thus, f is continuous at 1. Now, finally, for x equals 5, we noted earlier that x squared minus 5x all over x minus 5 is undefined at x equals 5. So, f at 5 is undefined. Now, let's check the limit of f as x goes to 5. Values close to 5 are in the last interval. So this is equal to the limit of x squared minus 5x all over x minus 5. So notice that I did not solve for the left and right hand limits here because I know that there is a common factor in the numerator and the denominator which is x minus 5 that can be cancelled eventually. So this is equal to the limit of x times x minus 5 all over x minus 5 
as x goes to 5. We cancel x minus 5, so this is equal to the limit of x as x goes to 5. This is valid because we know that x only approaches 5 and is not equal to 5. So the limit is just equal to 5. The function value at 5 is undefined, but the limit exists. Recall that when this is the case, f has a removable discontinuity. So let's conclude. Thus, f has a removable discontinuity at x equals 5. Now, since we have a removable discontinuity, we redefine f so that f will be continuous at x equals 5. We do this in the following manner. f of x will be equal to, just copy the first two function definitions, because we don't have a removable discontinuity there. So, the absolute value of x plus 3, if x is less than or equal to 0. The greatest integer function of 2x, if x is greater than 0 but less than 1. Now, in the last case, we exclude 5 in the interval because it is where the removable discontinuity occurs. That is, f of x is equal to x squared minus 5x all over x minus 5. If x is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 5, and x is greater than 5. And we give a function value for x equals 5 so that it will be continuous there. Remember that for f to be continuous there, the limit and the function value at 5 should be equal. We solve the value of the limit of f as x goes to 5 earlier to be equal to 5. So that is the function value we will assign to x equals 5. That is, f of x is equal to 5 if x is equal to 5.